Well, good good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, welcoming you back to All Creatures Great and Small Part 2. I'm so glad that you're with me this afternoon or this evening, and I can't wait to share all these wonderful creatures with you that you see right here on the kitchen counter. Yes, this is Part 2, if you didn't get a chance to look at Part 1. That came out a few days ago. Lots of cats and dogs, and those things are all listed for sale in the old curiosity shop with maybe five days left. Now, I will go ahead and tell you I'm a little bit behind in my schedule, so I'm still listing all of these. Now, depending on when you watch this video, you may see one or two of these items up for sale, Um, but I'm working on it, and I hope within 24 hours of this video going live, everything will be for sale in the old curiosity shop. The link is listed below. So if you see a creature you can't live without, you go to the eBay store and you don't see it, it hasn't been sold yet, don't worry. You'll see it listed very soon, as I said, within 24 hours. Okay, let's dive in first and um, address the problem that we see here. And I know when everybody saw this poor little three-legged kitty, they went, oh. Well, there's Mama Kitty right there, and there's Kitten. I mean, they had the same face. Poor little thing is missing a leg. Now, I have that leg. Um, I'm going to glue it on. I think it was a clean break, and I think she's going to look pretty good. Uh, I'm going to pair these two together, because I think it's uh, Mother and Kitten. And we're going to throw this one in as a bonus. How adorable. Uh, There she is grooming one of her hind legs with her eyes closed. Anyone who has had cats, you know, we know that. That's a daily routine. 
And again, as I said, these are all basically, for the most part, going to be made in Japan. And if there is any damage, I'll tell you. Such as this poor little thing. Look at that little face. All right, sweetie, I'll get you fixed up. Now, there are a couple things in here that are just here for honorable mention, and I think I'm going to keep. I just bought this very stylized Art Deco looking cat a few days ago and this kitty reminds me a lot of the work that was done by really good artisans in, um, oh, Vienna, let's see, in Austria and um, Czechoslovakia and such in the 1920s and 30s. Now I have a feeling that this might be a 1970s piece. I don't believe it to be uh, that old, um, you know, from the 1920s or 30s. But uh, it's brass and uh, it's unmarked. I love the style of it. I'm going to do some more research on it, but I think this is going to go into my own collection because of the style. There's a very famous one called Scaredy Cat that I cannot remember the name of the designer, but it was put up by the Chase Company. And you may find that if you go, you know, looking around, but this is, this is not the Chase Scaredy Cat. I wish that it were. Here's a little glass candy container, Scotty Dog, and um, the candy little pebbles would be up in there with a piece of paper or cardboard over this, and the children could rip the paper off and eat the candy, and then they have a little, a little sc a glass Scotty to play with. We know how popular this breed was in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, even before Fala. That's FDR's little Scotty, and even before Asta, who we all see on the uh, Myrna Loy and, uh, oh, Robert, who was the, what was the name of the man that played the, the thin man? It just escaped me. But Scotty's became uh, a very popular American breed starting in the 20s and remained popular for a long time. Here's another collection of four Scotties all together. And we see one, two, three, four. The, <clears throat> the pink one back here has a tiny little flea bite on his ear. You can see that. No damage on the others. These all feel like, these three feel like a porcelain. This one is much lighter. And when we turn them around, there's a label on the back that actually tells us, where you can see it, I hope. Uh, it's not focusing for me, but it says bone china uh, and then the word Japan so it's interesting that that little label is on there telling us that he's made out of bone china and still made in Japan then this grouping right here aren't they the sweetest little things hold on I'll be still get this camera still okay so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine little pups now these two here, uh, the little standing ones that are begging, those are identical. All right. So we have those two that are the same, and then the two sleeping pups are the same. But everybody else is a slightly different pose. Look at this one. He's the boss, you can tell. Aren't they cute? And that looks like a cat again, so I don't know. <laughs> stick that in there and then right there and most of these are uh, again made in Japan now this right here I don't know who thought this up but hats off because is this adorable or what it is a bumblebee putting on his necktie in front of his vanity so this is the mirror and here's the little vanity we can see and we can see him adjusting his, his necktie there in the mirror. Mirror. There's a hairline crack in the base, not a big deal. And it does say Japan something something underneath. Oh, it says night out in quotes. Can you see that? N-I-G-H-T-O-U-T, -T, Napco, night out. So the bee is having a night out on the town and he's getting all dressed up. The sad part is his wings are gone. We can see here they were broken off and they are completely gone. I don't care. There's a cuteness factor to this. Keep him just like he is or, or make some wings for him. You crafters, a little bit of paint loss on his rump there, but that's just adorable. 
the night owl. Now these three are typical 1930s style Japan and they are so funny. Look at the impish look on this guy right here as if he is up to something. And I love the coloring on him. He's not a salt and pepper. He is a salt and pepper shaker. I'm sorry. So he's missing his mate. And this one, again, is made in Japan. But because when you display him like that, you really can't see the holes. So you could use him like that. Uh, typical of the 30s. I really like that guy a lot. This cute little planter here. Uh, I think that's supposed to be a butterfly that has landed on his tail or a bug or something. And he's looking back there not too happy about it. You can put your lipstick in there if you want. And then here's another one. Look at that face. Okay, Japan. And he sort of matches the others as well. So these three, these three are going to be all together in one auction. Now let me, oh, stand up. I'm glad you didn't hear those knees make all that noise. We've heard of Ronson lighters, right? Cigarette lighters. But they made decorative pieces and figural pieces. This is going to probably date to around 1920. So it's probably close to the oldest thing, probably the oldest thing we have here. And he is made of heavy cast metal. I'm telling you, that guy probably weighs 10 pounds. And look how beautiful he is. The detail is fantastic. I did not over clean him at all. You see, you get all this. Let's get him in some better light uh, so we can, well, hold on for a second. Um, I'll move him over here. You can see him a little bit better. I mean, he is just wonderful. And I've been holding on to him for a while. He's decorative, and as I said, I did not get in there with a scrub brush and get out all that old uh, dust and dirt. Collectors like that kind of thing. So he has not been over cleaned. Uh, he's just decorative. Um, you will see when you turn it upside down, we've got... Uh, holes in the bottom of the of the ho hooves of the feet and sometimes something like this would be mounted on marble we see um, the way this spaniel is is mounted there um, and there's something floating around inside it looks like someone put some plaster in those holes and then covered it up with some some kind of cloth but he's not really a clock topper he's not a doorstop he's not made by Hubble he's just a decorative figure and he's got no damage at all the hut the trunk is perfect the husk hmm the tusks have a tiny bit of paint loss on them I know my camera isn't focusing and I apologize you'll see much better pictures uh, if you go to the auction site but he's good quality he's heavy he has not been repainted he's got some nice old uh, a nice old patina on him and I love that elephant I hope that he'll find a good home probably dating to the 1930s and this was probably part of a desk set not a clock topper uh, you could have used him as a bookend uh, there might have been two, but a lot of these were, were, you know, you'd get the whole desk set and sometimes there would just be a, figure t a figurative piece like this, figural piece like this, a, sp a spaniel, is that right? And he's more of a lighter uh, sp uh, pot metal, unlike this, which is iron. Now, there's no damage on, on this, and he is mounted on some onyx or some kind of marble, and there's the old green felt on the bottom. You could use him as a paperweight or whatever you'd like. He's really nice as well. Um, I don't often get pottery from Kansas, but we've got some back here in this wonderful two-piece planter. Uh, this probably dates to the 40s, and I'm guessing it's somewhat difficult to find. Now, we can see right on here that it is made in Kansas. And this is the Milton Vale uh, Potteries. You, we can see there Milton Vale Potteries and the word Kansas in the middle. And uh, so he's a two-part planter. 
Now his rear end is in excellent condition with no chips or cracks. The front uh, end of him has a slight issue, but not a big deal. I mean, this is not a piece of Newcomb Cod College pottery, pottery, so the damage that's on him probably doesn't affect his value that much, but it's there, and I'll show you. A piece was broken and repaired. Now, I would like you, if you're interested in him, to make sure you go on the auction and look at the, at the repair, and we can see over here a little bit better. A little hunk there was broken off right here. Okay, and, so, and it was glued back on. You see that? They glued that little, that little corner back on um, fairly well. I mean, I'm glad they glued it back on, but that's it. That's the damage on him. But something that I don't think that you see very often, and I love how he's separated into two parts two beautiful horses back here that are planters and uh, they look like they were made by the same company I don't believe so this one is Rubens Japan and that was an importer you'll be able to see that I don't know why well there we go and of course it's upside down now it won't refocus <laughs> Oh, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. There it is, Rubens, Japan. Okay, and then the uh, mark underneath. So he's a planter, beautifully done, absolutely no damage, a soft eggshell color. I love the soft sort of airbrushed paint. I'm selling these two separately. They're not, they don't match. Uh, this one has nothing on the bottom except a production a mold number or something like that but this is cute as well I like the pose here of the, the mother probably the mother and uh, and the baby horse together okay I need to speed it up I'm taking too long my friend Jason it told me that that looks like I showed him a picture of this and he said oh you know who that reminds me of Really, Jason, Lady Elaine Fairchild? Now, you know, I grew up watching Lady Elaine Fairchild, but now I cannot look at this cat without thinking of her. Uh, that, that wonderful character on the Mr. Rogers program. I love this cat. Look how tall she is. She or he. There's absolutely no damage until I drop it on my granite countertop. Nothing on the bottom. I don't know who made it. And if it were a black cat, I would keep it. You know, I like black cats. This is nice, and I am going to sell it. I love the body. There's kind of a sleek Art Deco design to it. Get Mr. Elephant back over here where he was. Okay, this is called the Little Vet. It's a Napco piece, if I remember. Wait, Napco or Lefton? One or the other, I don't remember. And there's a series of them. Okay, Little Vet. I think they came out in the 50s. It looks a little bit like a Hummel, wouldn't you say? So the Little Vet is taking care of his pup, the toothache, I guess, that the little pup has. It says Little Vet on the bottom. The Flamingo Candle Holder is from 1985, and it's made in Japan. Don't we wish it was Will George from the 40s? Well, it's not. But these are still good to have. No breaks on this with that delicate neck. And this is sarsaparilla, made in Japan. You can clearly see that on the bottom, 1985. I'm speeding up a little bit because um, I don't want to be 20. I don't want to be a half an hour with this video. Uh, kind of a majolica glaze. I like this a lot. A little bud vase, made in Japan, and it's uh, the made in Japan is stamped right there. This is going to be something from the 30s. Very colorful. I guess it's a parrot. Uh, as a little as a little bud vase there. Uh, Shawnee made this creamer and I'm matching him. I'm selling him together with this little elephant. This one is unmarked. I guess $1.50 is what... I don't know. I don't think I paid $1.50 for it, so I don't know when that was put on there. Very glossy trunk up. Having a good time. No damage on him. 
He's being sold with the creamer here, a little milk pitcher made by Shawnee. It just says patented underneath, but it's a Shawnee piece. I thought that was cute to pair those two together. This is a planter back here, and uh, I don't believe there's any markings on it. I uh, don't see anything on there. Love the color on that. Big size and in really good condition. As cute as they can be is Mama Kangaroo and her little Joey sitting down in there, salt and pepper shakers. This is, this is adorable. Come up here, little kangaroo. So we'll pull out the baby, the baby Joey, right there. Yeah, and there's Mama. All right, get back in that pouch. You're not going out on your own, not tonight. The bumblebee is going out, but you're not. All right, those are cute. Who's to say? Remember Lorraine on SC? Was it SCTV? Oh, too cute. <coughs> I know, I just really, that was a horrible impersonation. And those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about are like, what is he talking about? I miss Lorraine. She was hysterical. So what you got going on up in here? <laughs> Give her a look see. Huh? Go and look her up. I'm telling you, Lorraine. And I think it was SCTV or Mad TV. It was Mad TV. <laughs> oh, how cute. <laughs> that was Lorraine. She's hilarious. Two Swans. That one is American Bisque. We can tell by the telltale, uh, the way the bottom looks, even though it's unmarked. Swan. I can't remember who that is. I don't remember. I just don't remember. There's nothing on the bottom and I should be able to tell you uh, whether it's McCoy or Hager or or uh, any Hall or but I just can't remember. I gotta try to look him back up. The skunk back here is wonderful and the, there were several of these. This is Poof. Uh, there was another one I think called, uh, well I can't remember. Uh, but this is uh, Robert Simmons Ceramics, I think, of Los Angeles, Los Angeles, uh, and Poof is the name of this skunk, and he, there were some other skunks that had funny names like Puff, Puff, Poof, Poofy, Stinky, uh, I don't remember the other name, Peppy, you know, different names for the skunks. Uh, he doesn't have any problems with him either. He's in good shape. All right, we talked about everybody. I've got to fix this poor little kitten. This I'm going to keep and do some research on. And the honorable mention. And you knew you're waiting. And you're like, oh, look at that flower frog. Well, let's pull it out. I'm not ready to part with this yet. I am going to look around and see if I can come up with the maker. A few flea bites in the frog itself. There's one there. Well, I think one there. So the frog part has just a few flea bites in it. And then, um, but the lovebirds are wonderful. They sit right down in there like that. Made of pink, uh, pink glass. I know Cambridge made these and Falstoria and there were English companies that made them. I guess Westmoreland made them. And then there's the bird in the front. And look how Art Deco, they did the rocks on the back. It's just a very, it's very geometric and very 1930s. So, uh, probably this is going to go up for sale. I just want to spend a little more time with it before I get rid, part with it and make sure I know who the maker is. So standing back up and moving back. 20 minutes into this video, 23 minutes in. Thanks for watching everybody. I've had so much fun collecting these animals and getting them all ready for you. Uh, remember, uh, if you didn't get a chance, take a look at part one and fear not, I'm getting all these listed. They should be up really soon and you'll have a chance to uh, bid on a few of these animals and adopt them for yourself. It's Friday night. I hope everyone has a nice, safe weekend. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.